Welcome to Electron Line. Before we learn how to add and subtract fractions, we need to know how to find the lowest common denominator because that's the technique to learn how to add fractions or how to subtract fractions from one another, especially when the denominators are not the same. When the denominators are the same, it is really easy to add and subtract fractions, but when they're not the same, we need to find what we call the lowest common denominator, the LCD. How do we do that? And what does it even mean to find the LCD? And of course, before we can do that, we need to know what an LCD is. What is the lowest common denominator? Well, the definition is the lowest common denominator is a number, is a denominator that all the other denominators fit into evenly. There's different techniques to find the lowest common denominator. There's actually three main techniques. The first technique, and notice here we have four sets of fractions. Three of the sets have two fractions in them. This set has three fractions in them. The first technique is to see, to look at the largest of all the denominators to see if the others fit evenly into it. For example, if we look at these two denominators, notice that 6 fits evenly into 12. If all the other denominators fit evenly into the largest denominator, then the largest denominator becomes the lowest common denominator. In this case, since 6 fits evenly into 12, 12 is the lowest common denominator. The LCD is equal to 12 because 12 divided by 6 is equal to 2, which is an integer number. That means 6 fits evenly into the number 12. Looking at the next set, we have a similar situation. Even though there's three fractions there, notice that the largest of the three fractions, 18, is such that the other two fractions fit evenly into 18. 6 fits evenly into 18, and 9 fits evenly into 18, which means that the largest of the three fract fractions, or the largest of the three denominators, becomes the LCD, the lowest common denominator. In this case, the LCD is also equal to, well, not also, but it is also equal to the largest of the three denominators. In this case, the LCD is equal to 18. To check, we can see that 18 divided by 6 is equal to 3, and 18 divided by 9 is equal to 2, which are integer numbers that verifies that, yes, indeed, 18 is the LCD. When we go to the next set of fractions, notice that 7 does not fit evenly into 11. The smallest does not fit evenly into 11. We also notice that both denominators, 7 and 11, are both prime numbers, which means they cannot be broken down into smaller numbers or they cannot be broken down in a product of prime numbers. In that case, and in some other cases, the lowest common denominator is simply the product of the two denominators. In this case, the LCD is equal to the product of 7 times 11, which is equal to 77. 77 is the LCD of these two fractions. We simply multiply the two fractions together. If we go back to this example here, could we have found the LCD multiplying the two numbers together? 6 times 12, which gives us 72. Well, 72 would be a common denominator, but it would not be the lowest common denominator. Now, for using it, it is perfectly fine to use a common denominator. It doesn't have to be the lowest one, and we could still utilize it to find the addition and subtraction of fractions although it makes it all easier when you find the lowest common denominator because then the numbers you're dealing with are a lot smaller. If you don't remember how to find the lowest common denominator, it's okay to simply find a common denominator by simply multiplying the two numbers together and say, well, 72 is a common denominator, it's just not the lowest one, and I can use it. But when you come to something like this, I really would not want to multiply those two numbers together, 24 and 42, and say that's my common denominator because that's a really big number. I'm hoping there's a smaller number than simply the product of the two. And to find that, you do the following thing. Well, first, of course, you want to check to make sure that the smaller one does not fit evenly into the larger one, and 24 does not fit evenly into 42, so it's not the lowest common denominator. In this case, to find the lowest common denominator, you're going to take each of the two denominators and write it as a product of prime numbers, the smallest prime numbers you can find, which means that just like for the greatest common factor, you're going to take each of the two denominators and divide it by the smallest prime numbers possible. 
And I guess we're going to start not with 42, but with 24. 24 can be divided by 2 to give you 12. That can be divided by 2 to give you 6. That can be divided by 2 to give you 3, which means that 24 can be written as 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. You do the same for the other denominator, 42. 42 can be divided by 2 to get 21. This one is no longer even, but it can be divided by 3 to get 7, which means that 42 can be written as 2 times 3 times 7. Now here's where the next step differs from the way you did it for the greatest common factor. Remember you looked for common prime numbers. Here we have 3, and here we have only 1. And when we try to find the greatest common factor, we take the smallest of these numbers, there's only one of them, so you only grab one of the twos, but when you find the LCD, the largest common denominator, you need to take the greatest number of them, which means that the LCD, in this case, is going to be, since there's three twos here and only one there, you're going to take the three twos, two times two times two. Now notice we have one three here and we have one three there, so you grab the largest number of them, but it doesn't matter which one, there's only one of them there, three. And here you have no sevens, but here you do have a seven. In that case, you do grab the singular number, the single seven there, and multiply times seven. The lowest common denominator, therefore, becomes the product of all these prime numbers, which means it's equal to two times two times two is eight, three times seven is 21, and eight times 21, eight times 20 is 160, add another 8 times 1, that makes it 168. The largest common denominator, did I say largest? I meant the least common denominator, or the lowest common denominator, the smallest number that all other denominators fit evenly into is 168, which means that 168 divided by 24 should give me an integer number. 24 goes into 168 seven times, because seven times 24 is 168. And if I take 168 and divide it by 42, that is equal to four. Notice that in both cases, I get an integer number, which means that the lowest common denominator, 168, is such that both 24 and 42 evenly fit into it, and it's the lowest number that, that makes that possible. There's no smaller number where 24 and 42 can evenly fit into. And that's how we find the lowest common denominator in the third methodology. Notice the first method is to see if the smallest number fits evenly into the largest number. If there's three fractions, do the two smaller denominators fit into the largest of the denominators? That's the first method. The second method is if they are prime numbers, you simply multiply them together. 7 times 11 gives you 77, and that method works for any case, but it doesn't always give you the lowest common denominator, but a common denominator. And finally, if you want the lowest common denominator and the numbers are big like this, you take each of the numbers, break them down as a product of prime numbers, then you find which prime number occurs in each case. You grab the most of them, in this case three of them versus one, 1, 3, and 1, 7, multiply all the numbers together, and that gives you the lowest common denominator. And that's how we do that. Now that we know how to find the lowest common denominator, we can utilize that to learn how to add and subtract fractions when the denominators are not the same. And that's how it's done.